So I hope you can forgive me my nepotism because I want to talk to you about a podcast, but it's a podcast that's hosted by a friend of mine and it's called Mr. Fields. It's a co-hosted, one by Tyler May, who is a friend of mine, and by Laura Benson. And they both are talking about mental health and trying to bring that out into the wider culture so there isn't this huge stigma attached to mental health itself. Now there's only been one episode released as of this recording, and possibly two, possibly. Now the second one I think is gonna be me, so this is why, I mean, it's a little, you know, you know. But I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan, especially episode one, where both Tyler and Laura are talking about the fact that they suffer from bipolarism, and they quite severely. And they go into very specific detail, I think quite pointed detail, about their struggles with bipolarism and how it has both shaped them positively and also negatively. I think that is such a great way to take a look at it, is that I think everyone has some type of mental issue at some point in their life. And so to not only just release the attitude that it's something we shouldn't talk about, but instead something that we can celebrate, but also control and allow people in to those struggles at the same time. Because honestly, the biggest issue is that people think that they're alone and that they'll always be alone and that there's no one else that they can reach out to if I could actually speak. So Mr. Fields, it's this podcast. You can go into all the different places you can get podcasts. I want episode two talking about anxiety and uh, I think it's a great show. Go check it out. The other thing I need to tell you about is this YouTube channel by this creator named Lemino. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. It's this 20-something Swedish guy who does these really in-depth documentaries and breakdowns of different cases and different concepts. The two that I have seen already, after, and then I had to subscribe to him after I watched, were the, if I could speak, the Bermuda Triangle and its whole entire history of why people think it has supernatural powers. And the second one is this strange case that happened in Russia. It's called the Distilov case, I believe, where these group of hikers went, mysteriously died, and nobody really knows what happened. And so he goes through all the different theories and, and kind of figures it out and pieces together a really well thought out essay on what probably was the cause, as best as we can tell. This is really fine research, reporting, film work. It just has the entire package. I think the guy narrating is just charming. It's one of those YouTube channels where you never actually see the person, like akin to Minute Physics or CGP Grey, but it's not a science channel. This is really something that's really doing like investigative kind of, I guess I shouldn't say investigative reporting, it's just more they are research and analysis of different topics and different interests of this guy. Start with the Bermuda Triangle, I really mean it. I'm gonna have a link to his channel down in the description, there'll probably be a card showing up here in the video as well. Take a look at that video first. If you're not hooked, there's something wrong with you, but if you're not hooked, then you probably won't like the rest of his stuff. There's there's just a lot of great content that this guy is creating. He already has like over 2 million subscribers. So it's not like he's some small startup. But I think you should see, you should be watching him. Like really should be watching him. Go go find out. Go go take a look. You know, I guess it all came down to this. This past week's Game of Thrones is jaw-dropping in, in many, many ways. I mean, when this TV show started, you could really tell how uh, unfinanced it was, how little the budgets were. Most of the battles that they talked about in the first season happened off-screen. You, like, knock out Tyrion and, like, hey, a battle happened. It was crazy. And we get, we get to now where we are seeing CGI dragons taking out just an entire platoon of people, and it looks phenomenal. I, I think we've reached a point here where we're getting into the end game, and so we have people that we like, 
you know, those shades of gray characters that are on either side. And now the show is trying to, and I guess the book series, and George R. R. Martin probably planned it this way from the start, where we need to decide whose side we're really on. Do we want Daenerys to succeed? Do we want Jaime to succeed? Do we want Tyrion to be uh, sticking around? Do we want any of this to actually happen? We know that this is not going to end well for the vast majority of the people that are left in the show. And I think that they do just a phenomenal job of setting the table. I think they did a lot of great character work here. I loved having Arya come back and, and having those conversations with, uh, with Sansa and seeing just how far they've come. Bran seems a bit weird. <laughs> it's like uh, like the wettest blanket at a party of, is Bran Stark. But man, this episode might very well be in my top five of the entire run of the show because it just hits every single note perfectly. Ugh, I want to see more dragons, that's for sure. Let me know what you think down in the comments. In the past week, I spent $800 on a drone, $600 on a lens, and $950 on another lens, which is the lens that I'm filming this on right now. That is a lot of money. <laughs>